Well, hey, Catherine, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. How's, how's everything going on uh, on set? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, we're we're in the thick of it. Dust, rain, shine, horses, bank robberies, everything in between. But I'm loving every minute of it. And you guys are filming on location, right? In like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this Mex- not Mexico, but like... Uh, we're in Santa Fe, yeah. Santa Fe, okay. Is it, has it been kind of hard trying to adjust to that climbing over there while, while also trying to do nine, 10 hours of your job? I mean, it's fantastic. I, I, it's so beautiful here. I love this environment. And, you know, getting we, we shoot on this most beautiful location and we have a town that's pretty much a practical set. And so just getting to be outside every day and looking at the mountains in the midst of this wonderful environment that we have, it's, it's a dream come true. Um, I guess uh, get into my actual question, but how much how much different of an adjustment has this been for you to kind of not only want to say your bare bones like but like you're in the West so it's not really too much to do versus like modern times roles that you've played where you've kind of got more of like more tech and weapons and more more things you can do like how, how much of an adjustment has that been to kind of have more of a laid back role. It's definitely a departure. It's, uh, you know, I've gone from wearing leather jackets and jeans right. and super suits for the last 10 years of my life <laughs> to uh, a corset and four skirts and boots from the 1800s that are not functional in any way, shape or form. But it's, um, it's a lot of fun to get to dive in and see what that's like and to get to live that physicality. But, you know, nonetheless, you still find ways to, to build the world. So, so we're we're expecting to see some some scenes with Abigail just knocking a bunch of people out in the West. We're getting there. We're getting there. I mean, <laughs> she's the lady of Boston society, so she she has her moments, but um, we we get we get there eventually. I hope. Um, I you know we, we did the the press day thing with Jared and everything. Uh, I think last week, and um, you know, you got you seen the whole whole crew together. You guys look like you kind of already kind of familiarize yourself with each other. Like you have like a real family, like bond, like you guys are really, like I said, like a real family bond. Um, I guess like, has it been any adjustment just trying to get it into this new role um, with everybody? Like everybody's been cool or? Oh, I mean, what's been so wonderful about this show is that from the moment we all met, we clicked and, yeah. and that's so rare to find, but we all are so obsessed with this world and these characters and what that could bring and all the opportunities of different permutations and combinations of these characters. There's a lot of shenanigans. We also just genuinely enjoy spending time together, the right. cast, the crew, everyone else. And it's it makes it a real joy to go to work every day and to get to you know spend time with folks that you respect their work, but also right. enjoy them as people. Yeah, I, I got to be honest with you. When I when I heard it was a Walker spinoff, I just like I I just could not fathom the possibility of that actually happening, because it's like you know where, like where where could you go that doesn't you know touch what's already going on with Jerry Padalecki show, and yeah. you guys said hey let's go back 150 years. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, you, you've brought back a couple characters, or you brought back a character who is descendant of, you know, uh, Mr. Rollins himself. But I mean, I guess you guys have opened up the possibility to almost bring back anybody that's in the in the current show. It's true. I mean, you know, there's certain things that still exist and certain things that carry over. And it's it's really interesting to see, you know, the butterfly effect, as it were, of different things that happen in the 1870s that you still see yeah, affecting the the 2022 version of the walkers right uh i, I know this is more of the writer side not particularly your, your part of it but you know it just kind of bothers me that you guys uh the story is like you're literally like your first season is going to be you taking out one particular character and i'm thinking to myself okay where does this go after they take him out like oh is it just okay maybe it's just a case of mistaken identity no 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 spoilers or anything like that but obviously you guys have that in place is where, where your character goes yeah. after you know that he gets taken out yeah i don't know man look I'll, all i can say is that in independence everyone's running from something and no one is who they seem so as we get to dive deeper into these characters and peel back the layers it'll be interesting to see how things change or don't change moving forward yeah like i said i mean the first like you know definitely seen the, like the first couple episodes it's been been really really good so far and i'm like i said i really love that the cast is super diverse you know especially for a show that's supposed to be in the 1800s which you would never see you know a yeah. couple years some years back and you guys definitely open up that opportunity for, for different actors to be able to you know get an opportunity on the show one, definitely one of the things i like about 
this show so far is like I said, the, the diversity and just the different range of characters that you that you have on there. Well, um, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess can we? I mean, now no spoilers, but can we talk about potentially any anything Abigail's going to be able to get into going going forward that hasn't already been seen or? Well, what we do see is Abby's determined to find out what actually happened that night mm -hmm. and why her husband was killed and who all of these people are in this town and how she ended up in this situation that right. she's in. Um, but in order to do that, she has to face not only her past and the reasons why she didn't just and couldn't go back to Boston and uh, her husband's past as well and what actually brought them to independence. So we'll get to see moving forward, not only more about um, Abigail and about her husband, but about all of the characters and how everything is a lot more connected than it might seem. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, uh, I, you know, definitely, like I said, I've been, been engaged so far in the show and, you know, haven't, haven't watched the original, but now I started going back to, to, to watch that after watching y'all show. I'm like, okay, this is actually interesting. Let me, let me see what Jared's doing over there on the other side of things. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just so hard trying to get adjusted to see him play Walker, Texas Ranger. I think that's what it is for me. Like sometimes like you, you get attached to when y'all play certain characters, you're like, oh, I don't know if I can see it just yet until about three yeah. episodes in. <laughs> hey, well, we both used to hunt demons in the past. Past. Right, so maybe right. one of these days the demon will just pop out of a drawer and we'll we'll kill it. And be that's like, oh, that's that what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm you know, I keep I keep begging for them to let me shoot a bow and arrow on on Walker Independence just for the CW of it all to oh bring things God. full circle. I, I hope that happens. <laughs> uh, what's 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 next for you after this? I've got some other projects coming out. I've got a, a podcast that I'm doing for Shadowhunters, which is great. Doing rewatch and deep dive interviews, but. I've got a lot of things in the works to step behind the camera as well, which will be interesting to see what uh, that might bring in the realm of producing, directing, writing, et cetera. Oh, you're trying to do the trifecta. Do you do a little bit of everything, huh? Absolutely. I just want to tell <laughs> stories for the rest of my life. Yeah, you can't just have one job out here these days. You got you to gotta have a side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, like I said, uh, I, you know, I was I was really hoping to have gotten a chance to see that that black that, that green arrow and the canaries thing, and I feel like I you know I definitely had my chips on that. Definitely after how things ended and, and seeing you, uh, you know how how things ended with that show. But everything happens for a reason, right? Like this this is this is happening now, uh, and you like I said, I'd never imagined a spinoff of Walker happening in my hundred <laughs> percent. It, it wasn't hey, on look. my bingo card. Exactly, but hey, Mia Smoke is still alive and well in the world, and she's still looking for her brother. So I'm hoping there's still, you know, still a season of the Flash, still some shows out there. Okay, we just gotta find yeah. William. We can't leave him hanging out there in the world, oh, yeah. you know. You gotta, you gotta find it. Can't leave a queen child out there kidnapped. That's either gonna be a supervillain or a, a story to be told. Oh, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, so you talked about your Shadow Hunters thing. I know that's a really big following, and I didn't know you had a podcast for that. Um, yeah, is there? I mean, is it plans to do any more with your character from that series, or just this? who knows? I mean, if they ever were to tell any of the other stories in that world, I would absolutely love to be a part of it. You know, that's that, that really that show taught me how to make television, and it taught me so much about not only leading a series but also, you know diving into a character and and about how beautiful fandoms can be and you know the shadow fam is still very near and dear to my heart and always will be so yeah if you need clary Frey to come back i'll come running well look I, I appreciate you for taking the time out of your day to do this interview i appreciate you um cannot wait to watch more episodes of walker independence I, I surprised i'm not saying i'm surprised that i'm saying that but it's actually legitimately good i do enjoy it um thank and you, so you guys do a really really good job and, and thank you again for taking the time to do this Thank you, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>